Okay, um, good afternoon, my name is Anna Luff. Um, I'm from um, DASH, the Archive for Marine Species and Habitats Data. We're based at the Marine Biological Association in the United Kingdom. So we are a UK data archive centre for biodiversity data. Um, and we're co-funded by the UK and Scottish Government. We provide a national and international hub for accessing, safeguarding, managing and disseminating data. And we also provide support for reporting and for monitoring and reporting frameworks such as the Marine Strategy Framework Directive and the Water Framework Directive as well. Um, as well as that, we are committed to applying the fair data principles. Um, and we also have a rather great place to work, so that's us, um, up on Citadel Hill. Um, and you can see we look right over to the sound, so it's not a bad place. <laughs> Um, we've got a national role as an accredited MEDIN Data Archive Centre. We've had that since 2005. <coughs> MEDIN is a UK-based uh, marine and environmental data information network, and it consists of a network of organisations committed to sharing and improving access to marine data and information. And as well as that, we've got two seats on the MEDIN Working Group, which gives us an influence over the development of UK standards. Um, we're also a marine node for the National Biodiversity Network and a data provider for the Atlas of Living Scotland. We've got a European role as an eModnet biology partner and an international role um, as a UK node of OBIS and we're an accredited data unit of IODE as well. Um, so as part of this presentation I'm going to address the following questions. Um, how does the work at DASH contribute to the development of a global marine biodiversity network? And also, how do automated quality assurance and ingestion tools streamline data at a national and global scale? And I'm going to answer these questions through looking at an overall data flow and our data lifecycle within DASH as well. So here's a current view of our data flow. Firstly, our data is acquired from a wide range of multidisciplinary sources from system science statutory agencies. And this data is sent either directly through to us at DASH or to the National Biodiversity Network. Any um, marine species records that are sent to the NBN, the National Biodiversity Network, are sent through to DASH. And all of our data sent to DASH is disseminated through to the NBN, and then, which then is made available through to GBIF. We also disseminate um, discovery metadata through to the MEDIN portal, and then this is made available through to inspire via data.gov. As well as that, we disseminate data in the Darwin Core format to Eurobis and OBIS, and then to eModnet Biology. Um, and through eModnet Biology, data can, our data can be used to contribute to data products that support the essential biodiversity variables approach. And it also ensures data dissemination on a European and a global scale. Our data are archived in DASH in a Postgres database. And this is disseminated in two primary formats, in a MEDIN format and a Darwin Core format. Data disseminated in the MEDIN standard are made available via our DASH online portal. And the DASH portal is built on GeoServer where the data can be queried and downloaded in the WMS and WFS standards. Data is also available in a CSV format via a URL which is published in the discovery metadata on the MEDIN portal. Data disseminated in Darwin Core are published through our integrated publishing toolkit and this is a software that is um, connected to our database and it publishes a Darwin Core view of our database. And these data are then made accessible via our IPT to OBIS, GBIF and eModNet. Um, so next I'm going to talk you through a quick um, our data lifecycle within DASH. Um, I'm going to look at each step individually, but I'll just give you a quick kind of overview of it as it is. Um, so we receive our data sets. Um, we then transform this into the MEDIN format. Um, the MEDIN guidelines are available online, so the data can be sent to us in the MEDIN format already, um, and then we archive that data and disseminate it free of charge. Um, we then manually QA that data set, and this is a, a process that can be repeated until that data passes the QA. We then submit it into our validation tool, 
Um, and this is another process that can be repeated until it passes validation. And then when our um, data set passes validation, it is then archived within our data set using our ingestion tool. Um, so the first step um, following data acquisition is to standardise our data. And we do this to increase the interoperability and the reuse of marine data. And to do this, like I said, we use the MEDIN guidelines to standardise and input our data. Um, I've actually put on each slide a little bit of a segment of the data lifecycle where we are at the bottom, so you can follow your way through. So this is a quick look at the MEDIN guidelines that we use. Um, so these are available on the MEDIN website. Um, they are an Excel representation of our Postgres database, and all the worksheets are linked together using primary keys. So we can have a species record in a species form, which can be linked straight back to an individual sample event, and then to associated detailed metadata on the methodology, and then straight back to general metadata on the survey. And we can also store data such as particle size analysis and biotopes as well using this, um, these forms. And they're all linked back to individual sample events. Um, Medin also has an online metadata editor tool. And this is run by us and we use this to create discovery metadata in accordance with the inspired standard. And we use this tool to standardise discovery metadata which is then made available through Medin. The next step is to quality assure our data. Um, and as you can see along the bottom, that's the next step in our data life cycle. So this is checking for things such as abstract, title, start and end dates. Do we have the necessary detailed metadata and is it correct? We also do a check of the species data that is sent into Dash. And this is quite often more of a sense check than anything else. Have we got any species that are in habitats that they really shouldn't be in? And particularly, do we have any marine species that are inland? Um, we famously had a Chinese mitten crab um, that was recorded on top of Ben Nevis in Scotland, um, which is quite a feat for a crab. Um, so that was quite fun. Um, we also do a QA of the discovery metadata on Medin uh, and checking all the mandatory fields are completed. And does the metadata match the raw data as well? Next, we run it through our validation tool. And this is a tool that's designed on using Python, and it runs on a, on a sequence of steps. It checks that our mandatory fields are completed. It also checks for duplicates, and it checks date and time formats as well. As well as that, it checks IDs between sheets, and the few IDs using worms as well. And I've underlined the bottom two, just because these are two processes that involve checking every single row um, in a data set. Um, which is incredibly time-consuming if a person wants to do it, so it speeds up our process incredibly. So like I said, this is a process that can be repeated until it passes validation. And the validator tool returns a text file which highlights any issues which are then fixed by the data officer and then put back through the tool until it passes. So what are the benefits of using a validation tool to check the data in the MEDIN guidelines? Firstly, it speeds up data processing, which then frees up staff time in the team. It also increases accuracy and therefore user confidence. Um, we can also potentially develop the, the validation tool as a web service, so people can check their own data um, matches the MEDIN guidelines. And it has the potential to be embedded in other applications um, for the use of other organisations um, and possibly to um, check different um, data formats as well. And lastly, our data is ingested into our database, and this is, used, um, this is done using our ingestion tool. And it takes each MEDIN guideline in turn and ingests it into the database. It extracts tables, reads, and unpivots matrices. And it also quickly makes our data available via the geo server, which means that our marine data can be used um, to quickly answer marine biological questions. So to conclude, I'll just quickly go back to our first two questions. How does the work at DASH contribute to the development of a global marine biodiversity observation network? Firstly, our data flow feeds into European and global marine biological infrastructure. We also contribute to data products on a global scale 
um, especially via um, eModnet, where our data can contribute um, to the creation of data products in the EBV approach. We are also influential in the development of UK standards with our working seats, with our two seats on the working group in Medin, and these are in, in accordance to the INSPIRE specifications. And lastly, how do automated quality assurance and ingestion tools streamline data at a national and global scale? Through streamlining our data lifecycle, we publish our data quicker and fit for use, and our automated processes free up staff time as well. Our automated processes also increase transparency in our data processing, leading to increased user confidence, and our tools can potentially be used by other organisations to streamline data processing on a national and global scale. And lastly, um, we are in the midst of developing our um, conversion tools that would mean that we could accept data in a range of formats, including Darwin Core and legacy formats. So to finish off, here is a picture of me working very hard in my office. Um, thank you very much for listening. Do you have any questions?